Let's bow our heads just a moment for prayer. Gracious Lord, we are approaching thy throne of mercy. In the name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. How good thou has been to us. And we pray, Father, that you will continue to be with us. Many are sick and needy, and we pray that your power will heal them. So glad to pick up these letters and returns to the people that's been here that was once sick, afflicted, and even pronounced by the doctors they are well now. God, may there not be a feeble one in our midst at the close of the service. May the grace of God be with us. Those who are coming and seeking salvation, oh God, may they find that rock in a weary land, the shelter in the time of storm. And may the great Holy Spirit, Lord, baptize every believer into the body of Christ by his presence and the baptism of his being. Remember those who are convalescent, Lord, in such a way that they can't be moved, hospitalized, and otherwise. We pray, Father, that your Spirit will heal him. Now let the Holy Spirit search every heart that's in here tonight. May this be a searching time. May it be a time of sincerity and checking up. We pray that you will bless the Word as we read it. And then may the Holy Spirit take everything that's needed here tonight, placing the Word right over it so we can see that we got a redemptive blessing waiting. Grant it, Father, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You be seated. We've certainly had a wonderful day today. I, I stayed a little long last night in the meeting. The, uh, my wife and them like not got me a round to myself for about 10 minutes after I left the building. It was, I uh, had a little too much in the line, I think. It isn't when you're up there, see, up there in that glorious anointing, or it isn't when you're down here. It's between the counts when you're coming from one to the other, dropping out from that anointing back down to this again. But what does it speak to you? There's a land beyond the river. <laughs> There's the real place that we can find peace and joy and satisfaction. And now, the Lord willing, tomorrow night, we we'll give out prayer cards at 6.30, the boys will. And then, and we haven't got very much more time, have we? We've got this tomorrow night will be Friday, is it? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, three more nights. Well, let's, everyone wants to get prayed for and so forth, come right in now and get your prayer cards and we'll call them right into the line and pray for them and do everything we can. And if you have to leave before the service is over, go to the emergency room and we'd like for it to come out here. Then uh, the Holy Spirit can find where there's something in the life when it's out of that discernment. See, if you've got something that you have done or something you have not done, something you ought to have done, see, no matter how much you're prayed for, It'll never leave you until that thing's made right. You could just shake, lay hands, and pour oil on. It won't leave. It'll stay right there. Look, there was a Jesus gave his disciples power to cast out devils. How many knows that? Sure. Ten days later, we find them all defeated on an epileptic case. See, but when that devil laid right there, and then when Jesus came, and that devil know that he met something that was on a higher level than what those disciples had and he had to come out now we must always come prayed up confessed up and ready to be healed and then if you do that there's only one thing left cast the enemy out that's all if you've prayed up and are sure that it's God's will to heal you and you've prayed up on it that's, that settles it See, there's only one thing to do then only thing a, a gift can do is to cast it out it's all over. It's done then. And I'm so glad that we can, we can tell, we know something's happened when, when it takes place. Today was, uh, this morning early, I got up and uh, I never slept too well last evening. And 
I got up early this morning and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. And he said to me, get out, I'll use you. And so all the thing I knew to do is just get out. That was all. And I thought, well, my car needs the grease changed in it. So I'll just, or the oil rather. So I went up to the filling station. I thought, Lord, maybe some of these fellows here. And I talked to a fine Presbyterian boy hauling gasoline and different ones. It seemed like nothing urgent. And an accident happened on the corner. I said, here it is. Walked out there, but nobody hurt. So they, that wasn't it. So I got my car. I thought, I'll go back down home. I started down home and, well, something said, just keep on driving. So I've been making my prayer grounds up around Main, Mount Rainier up here, going back into the bush. And there's something about getting out where nature is, you find God. Just get, get alone by yourself. And I had little Joseph with me, my little boy. And uh, something said, pull off the side of the road here and stop because it's a uh, watch, let the little boy watch the fishermen. Well, they fished about 10 minutes and left, so Joseph and I was sitting there. Well, I thought, well, we'll drive on up in, uh, to the prayer grounds, and then I'll let Joseph play around while I read and pray. And then we'll come back down. I eat that once today, so something wouldn't let me go. And I thought, well, Joseph, I've got a rag beneath the seat. Let's just wash the, the mats in the church's car. I'm driving their car, so I thought I just won't take care of it. And I, Washing the floor mats, and I thought that's fine. And I had the door open. Joseph, he was doing his on the wheel down there, you know, a little fellow kind of entertaining himself. And all at once, the car stopped, started backing up. Someone thought that somebody in need. And then when I come to find out, in this car was a woman dying with cancer, a minister's wife. And they'd been led very strangely. They went to the place where I stay and I was gone. They left the handkerchief to be prayed for and started over another pass that they're supposed to go. And it, something told them, turn and go back. And they went around this other way. It's going down and said, isn't this strange? Why would we be coming this way? And just then said, one of them people's something wrong with them there in the car. At the same time, I was on the inside of the car, head down, scrubbing up and down like that. And I was going to leave within a couple more minutes. I'd been pulling on out to the prayer place. And there laid a woman in the back of the car dying with cancer. How God poured his spirit out in there. Isn't it wonderful how he works? How mysteriously he'll lead us from place to place. Just make every corner meet just as... It, that's just not coincidental. That's spiritually led. You believe that, don't you? Sons and daughters of God are led by the spirit of God. Now... Let us turn in the scriptures tonight for the scripture reading. Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, and let's begin with the 7th verse and read a portion down to the 12th verse inclusive. Remember the old, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the numbers of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, in a waste, howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. And as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. I would like to take for a text, which, if it be the will of the Lord tonight, odd, strange, but as the eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, take them on her wings and bears them up. I have often wondered why that God ever likened his heritage to an eagle. 
And one day I found out in the Bible that God calls himself an eagle. He's Jehovah Eagle. And his children are eaglets, young eagles, under the wings of Jehovah. And as a naturalist, I, I like to study nature. My first Bible was nature. How I noticed how everything taking place in nature and how it had to be. God, nothing else could be that but God. And it led me to believe that there was some great supreme force somewhere that controlled all these things. Like we, in India not long ago, I was entertained by 17 different religions one afternoon in the temple of the Jains. They had the Buddha, the Mohammedan, the Sikhs, the Jains, and what more. And there, there are very odd people, but out of all these 17 religions, most all of them, besides the Mohammedans and a few others, they believe in reincarnation. That the, they carried a little mop and they mopped the floor so they would be sure as they walked and not step on a little fly or an insect because it might be their uncle or aunt or someone that's returned back. How could you ever preach a blood religion to a people that wouldn't kill a fly, see? And so I just had to wait and let God do that himself. But he certainly did a great thing in India. But if we look at nature and find that how that everything operates, then you'll know that they're the basis of Christianity and Christianity is the only religion that's right. Because Christianity is based on death, burial, resurrection. Now, it isn't replacement. Now, if I drop this paper on the floor and said, well, I've dropped that one, I'll, I'll put this one back in its place. That's not resurrection. That's replacement. But the same Jesus that went into the ground, the same Jesus come back out of the ground. And resurrection or Christianity is based upon resurrection. Therefore, when you can see the woods and the trees and watch, here's a few months, ago, well, it's be about a year this coming, uh, about four, three weeks from now. I was down in Kentucky uh, squirrel hunting, and we had uh, had a meeting pretty close uh, about two years before that on the Methodist campgrounds for two nights. The Lord did great people, great things amongst the Methodist people, and so they, the Methodists used to believe in divine healing. John Wesley did. I've got his book, his textbook, and so forth, his notes, and so. They used to believe in divine healing. Many of them do yet. And so there's a great revival among the people. So this great campground down there, down in the Southern Methodist, they had called me down for a campaign. And I'd spent Saturday and Sunday with them. And Mr. Woods, which formerly was a Jehovah Witness, and his crippled boy, leg draw back under him, young man, sitting back in a meeting, his father sitting there criticizing, his mother sitting there praying. The Holy Spirit turned to a place where there's, I guess, at least eight or 10,000 people and said, the young fellow sitting back there with a the crippled leg, his father's a Jehovah Witness and he is a, a contractor. His name's Banks Woods. His mother is a Methodist. The young boy's name's David. Thus saith the Lord, stand on your feet. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Up he got. You don't even know which leg it was now unless it happened. So Mr. Woods, he really got saved and he brought all the rest of his family into his father and mother and all of them into the covenant of Christ by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he and I were hunting together. We'd been down about two weeks and he said, it's so awful dry. We had to get down in the low places to find um, uh, uh, where it's wet enough to walk or the squirrels would hear you. And so um, he said, I know where he's a man's got 500 acres, but said, very doubtful that he'll ever let me hunt because he's a perfect infidel. And I said, that'd be a good fellow for us to meet. So we went over and he pulled up in front of his house. And he is sitting in the yard talking to an elderly man. And when we drove up, uh, Mr. Woods got out and went around the car. And he said, hello, Jim, or whatever his name was. I said, how do you do? He said, I don't guess you know me. He said, uh, yes, I do. I believe you're Jim Woods' boy. He said, that's right. 
He said, I wonder if I could hunt back in here. He said, it's so dry. We've been hunting over on another creek called Dutton. And said, it's so dry over there. He said, I got 500 acres here. Any son of Jim Woods can have his pleasure hunting anywhere he wants to or any time he wants to. He said, I never had a more honest friend in my life than Jim Woods. He said, thank you. He said, now I've got my pastor along with me. He said, Woods, you don't mean to say you've got so low down that you have to carry a preacher with you wherever you go. And he said, uh, well, I don't know about that, but I, and I got out of the car. And I dropped around. And I said, how do you do, sir? He said, how do you do? Well, he said, and you're the preacher. Squirrel, blood, and dirty. <laughs> Whiskers about that long. And I said, yes, sir, I suppose I am. And he said, well, I guess Woods has told you that I'm an infidel. I said, well, he said something about it, but I hardly think a man that show the kindness that you have would really be an infidel. I said, he said, well, I'm supposed to be. I said, uh, I'm glad you said you were supposed to be. And uh, he said, well, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, I never did see anything that ever could, any more than this psychology could ever prove to me there's anything of a God. He said, I hear these preachers bawl out and talk about there was a God and said, he died back under a long time ago, 2,000 years ago, and said, what good could a God like that do me if dead 2,000 years ago after I'm dead? I said, yeah, that ended it, and you're sure right. I said, that didn't end it. And he said, well, there's... I haven't been to church, he said, for about 50 years. He is about 75 years old. I said, that isn't very much to brag about, is it, sir? He said, no, I reckon not. He said, but uh, there's a preacher that had a meeting over here at, um, he said, at Acton not long ago on that Methodist campgrounds. He said, if that guy ever comes in the country again, I'm going to hear him. I said, yes, sir. Brother Woods looked at me and winked, you know, and I said, yes, sir. And I said, uh, what was his name? He said, I don't know his name. He said, but... Old Aunt Melissa, so-and-so lived up here on the hill, said, I, me and my wife have been going over for two weeks, raising her up and pulling a draw sheet out. She couldn't even move for cancer of the stomach. And said, doctors gave her up months before that. And said, they, she could, they couldn't even put her on a bedpan. And said, her sister went to that meeting that night, said, there's some, maybe 3,000 people out there on the campgrounds. And said, this preacher, his first night there, looked back in that audience and called this woman by name and told her who this woman was that she is praying for. And the woman started crying, said, now take that handkerchief that you bathed them tears with and go lay it on a woman, for thus saith the Lord, she'll live. And said, I thought they had the Salvation Army up there on the hill that night when they got back over there, they're screaming and hollering, and said, we thought that the woman died. And said, wife and I got her clothes on about 10 o'clock at night and went up there and she is frying fried apple pies and eating them and said she couldn't even drink barley water that morning. He said, and now she don't only do her own work, she does all the neighbor's work. And I said, that was wonderful. He said, now when I, that guy ever comes back down here again, I'm going over to hear him. And I said, well, and you, would that make you believe in God if you seen something like that? He said, well, he said, now, I guess that's something you can see. I said, well, that was fine. I picked up a little old apple there. How many knows what a yellow jacket is? <laughs> and so the yellow jacket is on this apple. I run it off and, and started eating on the apple. I said, that's fine apples. He said, yes, they are. I said, how old is that tree? He said, well, said, I planted it there. I said, I guess that tree's about 35 years old or 40. I said, produces apples every year? He said, yeah, sure does. He thought he was trying to change his subject, you see. So I said, um, well, uh, I want to ask you something. I said, this is about the middle of August or the last week in August. And I said, I notice the leaves are falling off of that tree. And he said, yes, yeah. And I said, uh, why, I wonder what would make them leaves fall off that tree. He said, the sap's gone down. And I said, where did it go? He said, went down in the roots. Hmm? I said, well, what makes it go down there? He said, what are you getting at? Well, I said, surely before there's been any frost or anything, something had to warn that sap to go down in the roots. And he said, uh, well, he said, it's just nature. Well, I said, you set a can of water on a post and see if it'll go down. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, well, what do you mean? I said, sir. You'd admit that the something takes that sap, if it stayed up here, it would kill the tree. You'd never get another apple. So something warns that sap and it goes down into the roots of the tree 
until spring and hides and then comes up and brings you another crop of apples. So that's right. Well, I said the same intelligence that told that tree, that sap in that tree, get down in the roots. It's coming wintertime before we even have a cold spell or a frost. Get down there and hide. That's the same intelligence that told me that that woman was going to live. He said, you're not that preacher. I said, I am. <laughs> there, see, well, he said, you know what? Come here. I want to shake your hand. I said, I never thought of that. I said, mister, God is all around you. Who can make a flower one color and another and another color the same variety on the same sun? On the, see, make one pink, the other in red, the other in white, and so forth. God, God is in nature. If you just study him, he, he lives in nature. When I began to see that God called himself an eagle and called his children eagles, his prophets, then I wondered why. And I got to studying about an eagle. An eagle is a great bird. Now, the very word eagle, there's 40 different kinds of eagles that we know of. Eagle means ripper with the beak. And then an eagle is a strange bird. He can fly higher than any other bird there is. There's not another bird can follow an eagle. If a hawk would try to follow that eagle, he'd disintegrate in the air. He's not built for it. An eagle can soar so high that no other bird can come near him. He'd go plumb out of sight. Just go right up. Well, now, it won't do him any good to get up there unless he's built to live while he's up there. And that's the reason that God called his prophets eagles. Higher you go, the further you can see away. Well, then, if he hasn't got an eye that he can see, his eye will compare with his climbing, then what good would he get up there if he was blind? So that's why many people try to climb so high and they're blind as they get there. So what good does it do to get up there? See, you think you'll get your Ph.D., double L.D., D.D.D., Q.S.D., and all the other kind of a, of a degrees. But what if you got up there and you're not qualified, you'd be blind to the very thing you climbed on. It wouldn't do no good. You can't see back no more. The brother said about the key the other day he left, or the man left. So an uh, eagle, in order to go up, he has to be a special built bird. And a man to be a servant of the Lord is a special person. He has to be changed on the inside and made over again. That's the reason God calls his children, his prophets, the eagles. He has to climb up his eye. And another thing, if that eagle tried to climb up there with just an ordinary feathers, like in a crow or like in, uh, in a pigeon, why ever a feather would come out of him. Did you ever try to pull a feather out of an eagle? You better get a pair of pliers and put your feet on him. Because them feathers really stay there. If it didn't, he, it would drop the eagle when he got up there in those spheres where the other birds. So you see, he has to be a special bird. Another thing about an eagle, uh, an eagle is a, a special bird because he'll never build his nest on the ground. He builds his nest way high. He likens that to his church. You are a city that sits on a hill, not in a valley. You're a city that sits on a hill that can be seen far off, a light a candle. It can be seen far out, the church setting high with high expectations, high ambitions. I haven't got much hopes for a pastor's church that hasn't got ambitions to better themselves day by day and year by year. A church that's really a church of the living God will never stop and say, well, I just come in, I guess it's all right now. That ain't the church of God. He's got an ambition to press on. Well, I've done my part. I brought one sinner in this year and he got saved. Brother, that's not the ambition of the church of God. If he brings one, he wants another, 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 another. He's no end to it. He just keeps on climbing up. See, we want to have an ambition and expectations. God wants us to be that way. Then I want you to notice another thing. An uh, eagle renews his youth. Did you know that? An uh, eagle actually renews his youth. Now, he'll get so old that he can't already fly, and then all at once something happens to him. Now, he's just the same age, but he gets a, a youthful feeling about him. And he just restores himself. He's a good eagle again. Now, the Bible said that the eagle renews his youth. And I remember the first time I was in a Pentecostal meeting, it was in Mishawaka. 
was a young Baptist preacher, and I'm up there, and I heard these people, they had signs on the back of their cars, and I thought, I believe I'll just go into a religious meeting, and I sat down in the back of the meeting, and I heard them up there preaching, oh my, I never heard such preaching in all my life. And that night, I thought, I believe I'll get on a platform, and said, all preachers come to the platform, there was hundreds of them. And so I, that day I'd been noticing all the young preachers preaching about what Jesus had done and all about it. And, and uh, oh, I thought they had a wonderful message. I'd never heard of such before. And they'd speak in tongues and shout and dance and run all around. I thought, you got poor manners, but they, but they uh, sure are having a good time with it. So uh, I guess that's all right. So that night on the platform, he said, I want each ministry to raise up and say, where he's from, what's his name? So when it come to the night time, I said, William Branham, evangelist, Jeffersonville, Indiana, Baptist, sit down. And then they brought that night for the night meeting an old colored man out. Great big long old frock tail preacher's coat like we used to use in the South. Velvet collar, just a little rim of white hair around his head. Poor old fellow could hardly get out there. He says, well, I was going to tell you. He says, I won't take my text tonight. I believe it's from Job 727 or something like that. Where was you when I laid the foundation of the world? <laughs> Declare unto me for their passion. When the morning stars sing together and the sons of God shouted for joy. And I thought, my, why don't they put some of them young fellows out there? An old man like that before about 3,000 people? Well, they ought to put that old man out there. He's just as stiff he could hardly get along. Now all the brethren have been telling what had gone on down here on earth. He started back there about 10,000 years before the world was ever formed. When the sons of God were shouting for joy and the morning stars were singing together, he brought him across the skies and down the horizontal rainbow in about five minutes. Directly jumped up in the air and said, whoopee, and kicked his feet together, tipped around there and said, you got enough room up here for me to preach. Walked off the platform. I said, brother, that's what I want. If it'll make an old man act like that, what will it do for me? And I said, I'm 25 years old. I tell you, it renews his youth. Is that right? When the Holy Spirit comes in, it makes the old act young. <laughs> they become eagles. There's something about it. I never forget that. <laughs> I just might make a quotation here. That night, I slept out in the corn patch, and I, got my old, I had an old Model T Ford. It would go 30 miles an hour, 15 this way and 15 this way. <laughs> so, and, I uh, tucked the back seat out, the front seat, and put my little seersucker trousers between them and pressed them out. I had just a dollar and fifty cents to get back home on. Buy me some gasoline. I got some stale rolls and, and got the hydrant, something to eat. And I prayed all night. I said, Lord, i never seen such people in my life. I never heard of such. Now, I don't go with their manners because they just haven't got any manners. But I said, I, but I sure think they're the happiest people that are not ashamed of their religion. And so the next morning, I come in, sit down, a little... Uh, a t-shirt on, you know, and seersucker trousers. We Baptists, we even wore a turned around collar, you know. So we, so we got up there, you know, on an occasion. So I, I sat down there and I sat down by a colored brother. Now they had to have their meeting, uh, that's been several years ago, and they had it up north on their convention. Two or three different denominations of Pentecostals was having their convention. I think they've emerged now. There's called a PAFW and a PAFJC, or I think it's called the United Pentecostal Church now. So then, I think that's right. So however, they, um, I was setting up the back there and I sat down with a colored brother. And so um, this young fellow walked up the platform and said, that, that young minister was on the platform last night. His name is Branham. He was evangelist, a Baptist. We want him to bring the message this morning. Oh my. I scooted down the seat. I'd never been before a microphone in my life and I, I didn't know what to do in seersucker trousers and t-shirt. I just scooted down. So in a few minutes, he announced it again. Said, anybody on the outside? A young minister named William Branham said, tell him to come in. We want him to bring the message this morning. They sang another song and waited. I just hunkered way down. And um, this colored brother said to me, do you know him? Oh. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. He said, go get him. And I said, look, brother, come here. Hold on. I said, I'm him. Oh, you is? And I said, yeah, I'm him. He said, um, well, go on up there. I said, T-shirt and seersucker trousers? He said, damn people don't care what you dress like. So go on up there. I said, no, no. I said, shh, keep still. Don't stand about. See, like that. He said, anybody found William Bram? He said, here he is. <laughs> here he is. <laughs> I felt so funny. Little seersucker trousers on, T-shirt. 
I did have enough hair to be bushed up a little then, you know, so I walked up the platform and I thought, well, I'm going to say all these people are happy like that. I never forget a, t- a text from over in Job. Uh, and uh, uh, I, mean, I, I beg your pardon. I took my text from over in Luke. The rich man lifted up his eyes in hell and then he cried. And I said, there was no children there. Then he cried. Somebody said, amen. I never heard that before when I was preaching. And said, um, I said, there was no flowers there. Then he cried. There was no God there. Then he cried. He started going, amen, amen. And I just kept saying, no flowers there, no children there, no Christians there. And then he cried, and then he cried, and then, and then I cried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God is wonderful, isn't he? Renews our youth. He renews our youth like the eagle. Now, the eagle is a great bird. I could stay on this till morning, <laughs> just about the eagle. One of the most saddest things i ever seen, I thought, in my life, I was in Cincinnati not long ago, about three or four years ago, and I took my children up there to see the zoo. And I, I had my little fellows, and I was leading them around, showing the zoo while my mother was getting the dinner on the table and was having a Saturday afternoon outing. And I went down to a big cage, and there I saw something I always felt sorry for any animal was caged up. I can't even have a canary at my house. See, I don't like seeing nothing pinned up. No, sir, I don't like anything in bondage. I believe in freedom. And I go to a zoo and see those lions walking the floor. And uh, When I was in Africa, they gave me two little pet lions. And I could have brought them back. But I said, if I said, what will I do with them? He said, Another, in a year, they'd be great big fellows. said, put them in a zoo. I said, turn them loose right here on the desert. Won't never put anything in jail. I don't like anything in bondage. And so uh, I was walking around and they just caught a big eagle, great big beautiful bird, and they put him in this cage. And that fella, all the feathers just beat off his face and head. His wings was all beat off like this. And I stood and looked at him. And he had walked back there to the cage, he'd walk back like this again. He'd start off and take those big wings of flopping and he'd slam himself against that cage and fall back again like that. Lay there and look up towards the sky. Those weary eyes look around. Why? Oh, he's a heaven-born bird. He lives in the heavens. He couldn't free himself. He's absolutely hopeless. Somebody has caught him. Some smart guy caught him and put him in there. He's beat the feathers off of his wings. He's beat the feathers off of his head. He lay in there with his feet up, those big eyes looking up there where he really belongs. How he longed to be free and spread his big wings and fly through the heavens screaming. That he was to be free again. He could look, but he was in a cage. I thought that's the most pitiful thing I ever seen in my life. I thought if they'd sell it to me, I'd buy that eagle right now and turn him loose. If I had to half starve and lounge my children at the table to pay for that eagle to let him loose, they wouldn't do it. I went down there and sat down there. I couldn't keep from crying. Then something said to me, you've seen worse than that. To see man who's born to be sons of God, shackled down by creeds and denominations and, and people that says the days of miracles is past when he's actually born to be an eagle to fly in the lights of the heaven, younger brother, under the power and supernatural strength of God to walk by faith and not by sight. And some shrewd fellow has caught him and bound him down into something by a creed or something. Repeat this creed and that's all you have to do. Oh, brother, to get that man out of a cage. You see, sons and daughters of God caged in. It's a, it's a pitiful, the most sad thing i ever seen is to know that men and women who are born see women walk in the street half naked and these little old clothes around here and know that that woman is absolutely possessed of an evil spirit. That's right. Sister, let me tell you something. You say I'm as pure as a lily, I wear them. But do you realize something? Let me tell you, at the day of the judgment, you're going to answer for committing adultery. The Bible said, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. You might be as pure as a lily, but you dress yourself like that and sinful man of the world look at you. He's going to have to answer for committing adultery with you and you're going to have to answer for presenting yourself in the same way before him. That's right. These little old dirty sexy clothes that women wear. And it's getting into our Pentecostal ranks too. 
It's too bad. No, sir, don't you never do that. A lady said to me, I said something like that one time. This woman said to me, said, well, Brother Branham, they don't sell any other kind of clothes but this kind. I said, they still sell goods and they have sewing machines. There's no excuse at all. That's right, brother. When this old heart gets right with God there and that evil spirit begins to move up, you climb above those things in the world. The trouble of it is we're not attending prayer meeting and attending church and doing what's right. We're staying home to see some movie play or something like that on our televisions, uncensored programs, some of dirty jokes and things are cracking. And that's a wrong thing to put before a, 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 our young generation of people. That used to be it was wrong for the people, to, holiness people, to go to movies. The devil pulled one on them, he put them right in the house. <laughs> it's exactly right. Oh, it's too bad, but brother, let me tell you, it, it may put you in a cage, but you're still an eagle. I can tell you there's a way out tonight. Yes, indeedy. Yes, sir. That, you know, it behooves us to, to study the eagle just a little bit. We could stay on it for hours, but let's study this eagle just for a little while and see what he is. Now, it's pitiful to see that sons and daughters are born to be sons and daughters of God. Up here in Iowa, not long ago, to stop just a second again, uh, a fellow take me to dinner with him, and he went out, outdoors and uh, looked. He said, uh, he's uh, raised hogs. That's legitimate. That's all right if he wants to do that. He said, I've got the best hog uh, herd in this country. He said, this herd my father started, he raised all of us children, left me the herd. I've raised all of my children. I'll leave them the herd, and so forth. And I said, that's very fine, sir. I, he said, I, I own all this. That's not a snake could climb to it. Way up in this place. Then he'll go out and get green briars and come back and weave that nest through and through to be sure that no wind's going to blow it because it's anchored in the rock. Oh, my. I love that. God builds his church anchored in the rock. Yes. On this rock, I'll build my church anchored on this rock. He's a chief cornerstone. And when he builds his nest up there, then now it's all full of stickers. So now a mother eagle, she's going to be sure that her little ones are going to have a, a nice uh, place to stay. So she goes out and gets everything that she can. She'll kill a rabbit, eat the meat, take the fur and poke it in these little places, every little crevice and tighten it till it's just as snug and neat as it can be when, when the nest is completed. Now, she, what's she getting ready? She's getting ready for her little ones. And she wants them to have a nice little soft place to walk around and so forth. She's taking care of them. How God does his children the same way. Oh, how he blesses our heart. When the little eagles are born, a little soft nest to walk around in. You remember the first time when you was born again? When the Holy Spirit come to you and you become a Christian? You felt like you was just walking on feathers, didn't you? I remember when I got saved, I, well, I was about... 40 yards from the house, a board walk running up there, and I tell you, I don't believe I ever touched a board going in. And mother said, what's the matter with you, Billy? I said, I just don't know, Ma. I just can't tell you. And I, I picked up my Bible. I couldn't read it. I picked up a song book. I couldn't read it. I laid it down, went around behind the house. There's a railroad track back there. And I got on that railroad track, and I had to let the steam off somewhere. I run down the track. This horse couldn't jump way up in our heart. Whoopee! <laughs> Just as hard as I could. I had to give vent to that feeling. Oh, I was floating in the air. Ah, that new birth. When this little eagle comes, oh, he he's, loves his home. Now, the mother eagle goes out and gets fishes and she gets rabbits and she gets sheep or whatever she can get. And she fixes this little eagle a nice diet. She'd be sure that Junior gets the right thing. I'm so glad that Jehovah sees that his little eaglets gets the right kind of food. He'll put it before you whether you want to eat it or not. You'll have to turn your head. But if you're a born eagle, my sheep, my eagles know my voice. They know the food. Said, you love me, Peter? Said, feed my sheep. I like that. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Don't drive them. Feed them. Feed them the word. They like sheep food. You know, some people don't like this sheep food. The sheep food is that good old time feeling of old time salvation, just as free as you can feel and no condemnation. While we used to stand and clap our hands and say, I feel all right. There's no condemnation in my heart. Having a great time. And, of course, it'll cause the little chickens to look up and say, fanaticism. 
is a farmer not long ago. He was an ambitious farmer. He didn't have very much of a barn, but he just built the fine crops and done everything he could to take care of his stock. Another fellow had fine tractors, but he was too lazy to the farm. Well, when fall of the year come, he, he cut his weeds and put them in the barn. He had a beautiful barn. Oh, my, fine barn. But the other fellow, he didn't take time about the barn, but he was seeing if the, his animals got good feed. So there's a calf barn in each barn. And, and the next year when springtime come, you know, the, uh, probably the calf that was born in the good barn, great big high spires, you know, and plush seats. You know what I'm talking about, so you can read between the lines. Uh, but he didn't have much food. So then um, they turned him out. Both of them did get a little spring breeze. Oh, my, this little calf had been in a little bitty mission down there somewhere, a little church. You know, he, he was all fattened and round and full of vitamins. My, he got out there and that wind began to rush over top of him. He is full of ginger. He began to kick up his heels and, and jump around and around and around. Oh, he was feeling good. They turned the other little calf out, been fed on ecclesiastical weeds, you know. When he got out there, poor little fellow, the wind is just about blowing him down, staggering around like that. And he tucked his little face up to the crack of the fence and looked through and seen this little calf just happy and jumping and jumping all around and said, such fanaticism. <laughs> oh, I like to have sheep food, good food, the power of God, the Word of God, the Holy Ghost feeds on it. That's what the church needs tonight is good, solid gospel preaching, gospel teaching, gospel salvation, and the gospel Holy Ghost. Amen. We are not so interested in what well, this nation might not need a new president, the city might not need a new mayor, but what we need today is a good old time St. Paul's revival and the Bible Holy Ghost. Back to the church again. That's what we need. Sheep fed on sheep's food, not ecclesiastical weeds. Now, this little nest was all fixed up and sheep brought him the the food and he eaten all oh my he was growing now the first thing you know he's beginning to put on some feathers you know he begins to come into the second work of grace and he he begins to get feathered out pretty well you know so uh, mother eagle begins to look down and um, she begins to think you know I never want my children to become a chicken that's all you know God's just determined for that and uh, he doesn't want us to be earthbound chickens. So the mother eagle said, I've got to see to this. So the first thing you know, she's got to get them eagles out of that nest. That's all. If they stay there, they'll be earthbound. And that's the way it is. You just, I've often wondered why we went away and got great educations for schooling, for to be a preacher. And then we come in with all the history of the church and all this and all the vitamins and everything and then turn back around and say, well, of course, the days of miracles is past. How can you ever get a man that's freezing to death? How can you ever thaw him out by a painted fire? Well, if a man's freezing, you say, you see that great big painted fire there? On the day of Pentecost, there came a sound like a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. Yes, I'm shivered. Oh, the Holy Ghost fell upon them, tongues of fire. Oh, it was a great thing. But that was back. See, that's a painted fire. You can't get warm by that. If we are needing fire today, then we can't get warm by a historical fire. What good does a historical God do if the God of Abraham isn't the same God today? The God of Paul ain't the same God today. If the Holy Ghost that fell on Pentecost isn't the same today, then where are we at? Amen. Right. It's like giving your canary birds a lot of seeds with vitamins in them, make good wings and keep them in a cage all the time. See, he can't use his wings. What's he used to learning all about? God, if he tried to say he died 2,000 years ago and there's no more to it. I believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He lives. And he said, because I live, you live also. Amen. I'm glad for eagle food. That's right. Now, the old mother eagle's determined that they won't get adjusted to that nest too much. And God's just determined that a newborn babe isn't going to get too adjusted to this world. That's right. He don't want us to get adjusted here. He's going to get ready to take us on a flight. A few days before the old mother eagle takes her little ones on a flight, you know what she does? First, she gets up there. She stands up on the nest. And some eagles are 14 feet from tip to tip. The most mammoth bird we got. You stand on this nest. The old mother eagle is usually the largest of the two. And um, she'll walk back and forth over this nest. And she'll scream. Ah! That shrill that an eagle gives. 
What's she trying to do? She's trying to teach her babies the sound of her voice. Hmm. Amen. They're going into some perils in a little while, so they've got to know the sound of mother's voice. Oh, I tell you, it pays you <laughs> to listen to the voice of God. The still, small voice that speaks deep and rich. It attracts the attention of his people. And she walks back and forth over this nest. And then sometimes she'll spread those great big wings out, fluttering back and forth. And them little eagles uh, will just kind of shake them down a little, you know. And they'll look back and, oh, mama, what a great bird you are. <laughs> oh, I just love that. Because God's got two wings. The Old and New Testament. He spreads them out. And we look at it. And look up and say, How great thou art! How great thou art! When we hear that He opened the Red Sea and brought the children of Israel across, He raised Lazarus from the dead. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. New and Old Testament. The same God, the same Jehovah, the same Holy Spirit right in the church today, moving back and forth. See how great I am? I'm the same that delivered Moses. I'm the same that delivered Daniel. I'm the same one that brought the Hebrew children out of the fiery furnace. I'm the same one that was at Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm the same one that talked to Abraham. Oh, I am that I am. I am present now. Oh, God's going to take his little eagles on a solo flight one of these days. Yes, sir. Watch you get ready. See, they never know nothing but a nest. They never know nothing but a denomination or a creed. And they're eagles. So God's walking back and forth, even in this meeting, night after night, showing what he is. He is. I am that I am, he said. He's God. He's Jehovah Eagle. Trying to show the people that he's the same great powerful bird. Say, so see these great big wings of mine, Mother Eagle? Now your oldest brother and them that flies in here to see you once in a while, I took them out of the nest on these wings. Believe in me. Oh, hallelujah. I look back to Pentecost. He shoves his wings out. I didn't give him Pentecost in AD 33. He gives Pentecost to my children yesterday. Amen. I'm Jehovah Eagle. I bury you away on eagle's wings. I'm the same yesterday today. I was the one who brought the Hebrew children from the fiery furnace. I was the one who spoke to Moses in the burning bush. I'm the same. I want you to step out. If you're sick, if you're needy, I want you to step out. I am that I am. I'm Jehovah. Hear my voice. Listen to me. Don't take the voice of some chicken trying to talk to you or some scavenger. You better listen to Mama Eagle. This is her voice right in the Word. What's he going to do? Now these big wings, they've got to trust those wings. Now, she looks her brood over since they've been in this old ecclesiastical nest and they don't look very good. Now, they've got a lot of loose feathers in them. And she knows if she ever takes one of them eagles up in the air and drops him of them loose feathers, he'll break his neck. And there's just too much doubt in the church yet to take a flight. That's right. Got too many quills, too many loose feathers. So you know what he does? He gives her the third work of grace. She stands back there and takes these big wings and she begins to flop them like that. And a mighty rushing wind comes down through there and all the loose feathers begin to fly. <laughs> oh, and that mighty rushing wind comes from heaven. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. All the doubt and feathers will fly out of you. Amen. Now I feel religious. Amen. Begin to feel like talking to you now. Oh, and them old doubting days. Little old feathers sticking in there said, days of miracles has passed. There's no such a thing as the Holy Ghost. Let that rushing white wind from them wings of the new and old testament begin to fly back and forth said, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. How oh, the little old pin feathers will begin to fly. You burn our star off of them and you, if you'll do, you'll bust up in the air somewhere. You'll never take that solo flight. She's getting ready. Well, she fans all the feathers out of them. See if they're all good and tight. Now she's fixing to take them on a flight. They don't want to go. They're pretty well satisfied walking to that nest. So you know what she does next? She flies right into that nest and takes that big bill and picks that feathers out. She picks out the sheepskin and dumps it outside and throws it over the side of the walls. There is nothing left in there but stickers. 
And these little fellows is having a hard time. You know about the first time that you ever got the Holy Ghost, you know? And everybody began to talk about you and make fun of you and everything else. You remember how that was? Every time he sat down, it's a sticker. <laughs> and back there, he goes, but he don't want you to get adjusted to this world. He's ready to take you somewhere. Sometimes he lets a disease hit you. He let a cancer, let a tumor or something hit you to see if you're ready for a flight. See if you're ready. Where's all the feathers? See if everything's right. Yes, the doctor looked at me and said, you got three more minutes to live. Yes, but if I'd listened to that, I'd been dead years ago. But he just blowed all the loose feathers out. <laughs> Somehow or another. And the little old eagle, he'll start up. And he, everything's miserable, tight. He'll sit down, boom, he sticks his feet and he just stickers all in there, some old green bar. She puts them in there for a purpose. And the Bible tells us that our trials are worth more to us than precious gold. And then we fuss about it. Oh, must I be carried home to heaven on a flower bed of ease while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas? Why are we American people just wants to sit back and be entertained? And if somebody says something, say, I heard you join the Holy Rollers. Well, I guess I won't go back over to more wine. <laughs> oh, my. You're a poor eagle. You might be a buzzard, but you're not an eagle. That's one thing, sure. Let me tell you, brother. Yes, sir. If you're a vulture, you eat the things of the world. But an eagle eats fresh meat. Hallelujah. The eagle of God eats the word of God. And that alone. Yes, well, he can't stomach that old thing of the world. That's right, it won't, won't digest. He just couldn't stand it anyhow. He wants fresh meat. He wants the freshness of the Holy Spirit, the meat of God right out of the Bible. He longs for it. He'll drive through snowstorms and everywhere. When he hears this revival going on, he'll take off to it just as hard as he can. Jesus said, where the carcass is, the eagles will be gathered. Amen. Or they're Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, or whatever it was. When the power of God begins to fall according to the Word of God, real genuine eagles will come to that feast. Yeah. There ain't nothing in the world will keep them away from it. They're going to go anyhow. Or the power of God's fall. You say they're holy rollers or whatever you want to. They'll go just the same. Don't make it. Because they're eagles. Yeah. They, they eat on that. That's what they feed on. This mother comes a time she's got to stir up this nest and she throws it all out and throws all the, the, the soft part out and puts some trials on you. Now what would a little buzzard do sitting in that nest? He'd never get out of there, that's all. But an eagle, he stirs his nest and he's ready. Now one day she says, now I think it's time to take my little children on a flight. And she comes screaming out of the air. Yeah, there comes mama. They know it. Just like a church filled with the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost begins to fall, hands will go up. Hallelujah, he's here. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, here sits your neighbor there. You don't care who's sitting there. Mother Jehovah's coming in to the nest. Glory. Amen. Let him fall tonight. Let him scatter his big wings across this place here. Pack every person from a wheelchair, every sinner to the altar. He'll come riding in on the wings of an eagle. Amen. Oh, I feel good. Yes, sir. He'll come in if you'll let him, if you'll invite him. You hear that scream come? My sheep know my voice. They can tell that. Oh, I was talking to a doctor not long ago, and he said, Billy, I was having a uh, meeting in a high school auditorium at Jeffersonville at my home. And uh, people got shouting and praising the Lord down there because some things happened. And the doctor said to me, I said, what do you think about that doctor? And he said, Billy, you know what? I think them people are just excited. I said, you're a doctor. And you know, you can't be excited unless something's there to excite you. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Sure it does. It's the Holy Ghost comes in and excites us. We're ready to take a flight one of these days to glory. Sure it's excitable. If that wasn't excitable, I'd trench it for something that was excitable. I can prove to you by science that anything that doesn't that doesn't move is dead. That's right. You know, if a baby's born and it don't cry, it don't squall, it, it don't do nothing, that baby's dead. That's what's the matter at the church today. We got too many stillborn babies. You know what the doctor usually does? Pick him up with the heels and give him a little posterior protoplasma stimulation. <laughs> that fixes him up just right. And what the church needs today is a good old time stimulation of the power of the Holy Ghost to come into the church, tear us up and shake us.
a stir up the nest and blow out the loose feathers. Pentecost needs a stirring. Amen. Blow out the loose feathers. We're getting too much doubt among us. Superstitions. And could it be so? What is so? Certainly it's so. God's word said it's so. Eagle's food proves it's so. Amen. Sure it is. Eagle, Jehovah comes in and stirs up the nest. The church is getting too, uh, it's, it's stagnated. Yeah. Better come in and stir it up. Well, you say, Brother Bram, I've already got the Holy Ghost yet, but get some loose feathers in there. See? I was standing by the sea one time. It was Lake Michigan, really, where it was at. And I noticed that thing, the waters are blasting in and blasting out. I stood there and thought, floods of joy over my soul like the sea billows roll. I commenced to think, and I thought, you know what, oh, there isn't one more drop of water in this ocean or this lake than there is when it's perfectly still. That's right. It's got the same amount of water, but it's jumping in Carolina. I thought, well, what's the matter? It's got a revival going on. What does that do? It washes all the trash over on the shore. That's what we need today is a good old fashioned God sent revival to get the doubt and trash out of our hearts. Wash it up on the shore. Forget about it. Amen. Clean the sea. Hey, Amen. That's what we need. Good old dashing. I like something's got life moving. As a state game board in Indiana, I used to pass by a spring. That's the prettiest spring I ever seen. Summer and winter, it always bubble, 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 bubble. And I thought, well, you know, that's the happiest thing I ever seen. I sat down one day and I said, I want to ask you something, Mr. Spring. Why are you so happy? What are you bubbling all the time about? Are you so happy because of rabbit strength from you? No, oh, he'd say if he could talk. I said, well then, are you happy because maybe that uh, uh, cattle drink from you? Nope. I said, what makes you bubble then because I drink from you? He'd say, nope, Brother Branham, not that. I said, what make you bubble? He'd say, it isn't me bubbling, it's something behind me of bubbling. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what the church sees today. It's the Holy Ghost behind them to bubble a little bit. Throw the unbelief out and the trash and the, the thinking that the days of miracles is past and so forth. Let's get back to Jehovah's great power, Jehovah's great eagle food, and believe that we're children of Abraham. God's call. Back to the gospel, back to the word, back to the truth, back to the food. Angels food, sons of God's food. The eagle stirring her nest, getting ready for a flight. Yes. Oh, it's grand to know these things. Then the first thing you know, an old mother eagle gets up there and she screams and they know her voice. Then she goes down to where them little eagles are and she gives them a lecture. You're fixing to take a flight now. Something's fixing to happen, but don't you get scared if you trust me. Like Abraham last night. Come out here, take your own son, take him up here on top of the mountain and cut his throat. Will you trust me? I trust you, Lord, said Abraham. Oh, my. Something happened to you. You got sick. Something happened, this and happened. Somebody made fun of you. The boss said he'd fire you if he caught you praying again. He's going to give you a trial see what you are. Every son that cometh to God must be tried and chastened. That's it. And if you cannot stand chastisement, you become illegitimate children and not the children of God. When a man comes up, I don't care, he might shout, he might speak with tongues, he might prophesy, he might do whatever he will. And if he comes into that trial and backs up, he's not a son of God. No, sir. If he takes his life, he stands there just the same. Because he knows who he has believed and persuaded he's able to keep that which he's committed to him against the day. Amen. Now, Mother Eagle says, get ready, children. I'm going to give you your solo flight this morning. So she backs her big wings up, and each one of these little eagles climbs up on them big wings. Oh, I love that. Up on the New and Old Testament bow. Climb up on them like that and say, all right, fasten my hope right down. Reach over and take them out. Catch on one of those great big feathers that you couldn't pull out with a pair of pliers. Put his little beak around there, catch it in there. Hook his little hooker around there. Take these little claws, hook them down into the wings and say, all right, mommy, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, my. Jehovah, what? Almighty God, El Shaddai, the breasted one, the big eagle, the wing one, the Bible, Old and New Testament. Just take your hope, whatever you have need of, put your hope right on to God's promise and sit right there. 
No matter what takes place, hold on. Hold to God's unchanging hand. You reached up and said, I'm the Lord and heals all thy diseases. Take a hold of it. If he said, these signs shall follow them, believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Take hold of it. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Pastor says there's no such a thing today. Take hold of what God said. Put your hook around there and hold. You're fixing to take a flight now. Remember, it looks dangerous. Hold on! Oh, I'm so glad. Why, a buzzard couldn't do that if you had to. A chicken don't even have a hook in his bill. He'd slip off before he got out of the nest. <laughs> First time anybody said something about him, he'd say, Oh, well, I guess it wasn't right. Oh, but an eagle's a special built bird. He hooks that little hooker around there and puts some feet in there and he knows how to hold on. Hold to the wings of the cross, brother. Let, her, let the storms rock. Just keep on going. Moving up. She spreads those big wings, picks those little eagles up, feels the weight of them like that, and she gives a big jump off the top of this rock. Now, these little fellows never did feel that wind before. That's a strange thing to them. You remember the first time you felt an eaglet's? That mighty Russian wind coming down from heaven, set up on you, and clothing tongues like fire set up on each of them. You remember when it struck you? It's a strange thing, you Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Catholic, and Pilgrim, Holiness, Nazarenes, and so forth. You had been born, sure, you had been born again a Christian by believing. But when that wind began to come, oh, loose feathers begin to fly. <laughs> I'm telling you, something took place. It was getting you ready for your flight. So the little eagle held on. The old mother took her wings and she jumped off the nest. She began to rise higher, higher into the blue. Oh my. Oh, way on up, on up, on up, way on, way on. If there's happened to be a chicken on there, he's gone by that time. He just disintegrate and fall off. But these little eagles are special built. They know God. God called you, he knowed you, and ordained you, and put your name on the Lamb's Book of Life before the world was ever formed. That's what the Bible said. The Antichrist in the last days will deceive all upon the earth whose names were not written in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world. That's right. What are you scared about? Take the ride. Don't be scared, mother, in a wheelchair. Don't be scared, sister. Don't be scared, brother. You have the cancer, heart trouble, whatever it is. Don't be scared. God's invited you to take a hold of the wings of the cross in this Bible here. God's promise and fly away into the blue. Said I was up there before, Brother Branham. Hold to him. He'll take you up there. How can I do it, Brother Branham? I I don't I never did move my hand. I, I, I don't make any difference. Move it anyhow. God said so. Amen. I know you think I'm crazy. But if I am, just let me alone. I'm more happier this way than it was the other way, so I, I'm satisfied this way. The other way, I had worries and frets and everything. Now, nah, there's no condemnation. I just feel fine, see? So I like this, yes, sir? In the way that's called heresy, that's the way I worship the God of our fathers. That's right. Now, the old mother eagle goes so far up till she becomes out of sight almost. You know what she does to them little eagles when she gets up there? I've watched them many times. She shakes them every one off. Oh, you cruel mother. Oh, no. You smart mother. <laughs> she shakes them everyone off in the air because she's not afraid. If they was had confidence enough to put their confidence, she, they'd have looked all over her big wings. They'd known what she was. They had seen and she had told them what their brothers was a year before. And she knew they were flying. They know they were flying. She knew they were eagles. And she wasn't afraid to shake them off. God's not afraid to put you on a trial. When he said to Job, uh, Satan said, oh, yeah, he got him all hedged up. He said, make him, break that hedge around him. I'll make him curse you to your face. He said, he's in your hands. <laughs> oh, my. God's not afraid to put his eagles to a, to a flight test. He's not afraid. He's depending on you. He wasn't afraid to put Abraham to a flight test. He was depending on him. And he's not afraid to put Abraham's seed to a flight test. Because he's depending on you. She shakes those little eagles off right out in the air. She said, all right, children, flock for yourself. Mm, my. One of them, you know, and then what does she do? She swoops out to one side, sails along, watching. The first thing you know, one of these little eagles is on his back. He's a flopping as hard as he can. Next to the head, face down, he's flopping as hard as he can. But she's a watching them. 
They don't care. They're having a Pentecostal jubilee. Just flopping around. They don't care. If they get topsy-turvy, get out of balance, they are trusting in the great, all-sufficient power of their mother. And if one of them little fellows gets out of topsy-turvy and gets turning over too fast or something, she'll swoop right on him and pick him up and bring him up like in the grace again. <laughs> hey! Yes, sir! Don't you be afraid when he's tucked you up in these spheres that you don't even understand, yet it's written in his word because you look through his wings? He promised it. Just fuck. Nah, I can hear him hollering, hallelujah, glory to God, praise God, hallelujah, I don't care, but I'm just having a big time, glory to God, praise God, hallelujah. And the old mother, he and down on the ground, looks up there and said, such fanaticism. <laughs> she don't even know the first thing of no higher than a barnyard post. <laughs> and a lot of times the denomination craps her wings so she can't get up that high. <laughs> Maybe I better shut up. But oh, pray! I know what I'm talking about. Mm. Yes, sir. Them chickens don't know enough about the heavenlies. They've never been up there. Some time ago, a fellow's preaching on divine healing. I won't say who it was. And, uh, as soon as he left, there was another fellow come up there and said, there is no such a thing as divine healing. There's no such a thing as the Holy Ghost. That preacher's crazy. There was an old country boy sitting back there with the overhaul jacket on, hair hanging down his mouth, one tooth out. Come walking up through the building like that and stopped and looked up at him, reached down, got an apple, began peeling it like this. Preacher or the, the debater said, What do you want, sap? And he said, I want to ask you a question. Just kept on peeling it, said, Well, what do you want? Just kept on peeling it. Said, Speaker, I'll have you put you out of here. He said, I want to ask you a question. Kept on carved the apple up, you know, took the peeling off, sliced it off, tucked the core out. Put one piece of his mouth, being chewed all like that. So what do you want? Said, I want to ask you a question. Said, is this apple sweet or sour? He said, I don't know. I'm not eating it. Said, that's just what I thought. <laughs> How do you know anything about the Holy Ghost when you've never had a taste of it? Sure. You've never eaten. You've never tried it. Try it sometime. It's honey in the rock. Hallelujah. It's the power of God and salvation. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's eagle food. God's word, God's Bible, God said so. That settles it for him. For the promises unto you and to your children, to them as far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's his promise. And he keeps his promise. Amen. This little eagle's just a flopping around, you know, they're having a Pentecostal jubilee. Just that sh- shouting and a jumping. They're, they got, they believe. If mother took them up there, mother can take care of them. If God told me to trust him, I'll just trust him. I don't care how topsy-turvy I get. He'll help me out somehow. I don't know. But only thing I know, I want to flop my wings. <laughs> All the faith that I got in the New and Old Testament, both I'll flop them back and forth. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Just keep on flopping and flying. Somehow or another, if he sends a rushing mighty wind, he throws all the loose feathers out. You can stand here, it wouldn't take you up there. Just put your trust in him one time. See what he'll do. That's your solo flock. Oh my. I feel real good, don't you? Oh my. Nest stirring time. The Pentecostal church needs a nest stirring time. It needs an old fashioned revival. Like he spoke of Jacob, he was the apple of his eye. He done wrong, but he found him in the wilderness. And he like a, an eagle stirring her nest. He carried Jacob on his wings. Hey, Amen. The church has done wrong. We've all done wrong. But we're the apple of his eye. He's ready to stir the nest tonight. Send the Holy Ghost in and shake all the feathers out and have a revival here in this Yakima Hall Valley that'll alarm the nation. If you do it, there's an eagle stirreth up her nest and fluttereth over her young and take them up on her wings and bears them up in the air. He said, so did he, Jacob. And the Lord's inheritance is his people. Amen. That's it. God's inheritance is his people. He told Moses, he said, I am your potion. The other day I was standing by, this is fine. I was going by Brother Tommy Osborne, that sweet Christian brother. Tommy Osborne, 
He was brought to his ministry over there that night with a maniac, ran out on the platform to kill him in Portland. And then he's traveled overseas and he's done a, he's a, he's a sainted man of God. And I looked through his great building and he took me through there and how beautiful it was. Then here come our darling brother, Oral Roberts, one of the sweetest men and the finest men. And God has trusted him with great wealth and everything. And then I went to his building. I went through there and seen all them things built in the form of a trinity. No glasses on the side, all imported marble. And, and the ceiling is aluminum. All aluminum wires wore, wore close together. 500 machines or something in there. Just like assembly line running through and letters and so forth. I thought, oh my. I stepped outside and I said to Brother Fisher, a missionary with him in Africa, he was taking me through and I went into the, the mirror and seen those great beautiful hands reaching down like the hands of God and sinners reaching for him. My heart just jumped for joy. I thought, oh God, how I thank you for Oral Roberts. How I thank you for a one little old Pentecostal boy d born in a dugout over yonder could have come up to Mount like that. I said, how I thank you, God. And I stood outside and I got to myself and walked around to get my car. And then something said to me, is Satan? He said, but what about you? Oral's ministry come off of yours. So did Tommy Osborne. Here you are. Where's your IBM machines? <laughs> a little old end of a trailer that Brother Leo lets me have an office in. A phone sitting in there and a little second-handed typewriter. <laughs> what about that? I said, well, I sure hate for him to come see that. Satan says, you see... He don't, can't trust you. I said, I guess that's right. Yeah, all them brother with all I guess, yeah, he just can't trust me. That's all. And I stand there looking at her and I got real broke up. I thought, oh God, as hard as I've tried and everything else. And I said, then look what you have done. Just then I heard a voice said, but I am your potion. Hey! I said, oh God, a tin our cottage. Why should I care? They're building a palace for me over there of rubies and diamonds and silver and gold. His coffers are full. He has riches untold. I'm a child, an eagle of the king, a child of the king with Jesus, my savior. I'm a child of the king. Oh, my just flop then. Just keep on whether going up where you're down or whichever way you're doing. Mother's standing right out there soaring right around. His eye is on the sparrow and he you know he watches me in and out of his church to see if you get out of topsy turvy, something will happen. The the big wings, the word of God will bring you right back up. Somebody said that's wildfire. I'd rather have a little wildfire than no fire at all. You know, so, uh, I, we can take the big wings and bear it back up to the right. Is that right, brother? If they get this little out of order, well, we just catch them on the wing. You see, just exactly what it is, and bring them back up into grace again. If you just let them flop, yes, sir, just let them go ahead and shout, praise the Lord, and holler hallelujah, dance in the spirit, whatever they want to do. If they get out of order, we got something here. The wings, uh, God will never let you drop. If you're eagle, He'll pick you back up again. Now, if you're a buzzard, you're falling anyhow, so you just splash on the ground. But if you're a real eagle, you'll listen to the word of God. Amen. Amen. You'll know that's mother's way bringing you back to grace again. Amen. 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 Said not long ago, I heard a story. Said a farmer was going to set a hen. And I don't know how many eggs it takes for a setting out here. Down the south where I come from, it takes 15 eggs to make a setting. Is that the same thing here? So this old farmer only had 14 eggs. And he got an eagle egg and put it under the hen. See what a kind of a crop he got. That's about the way it is. About one out of a setting. Just about the way you get it. That's right. About one eagle out of a setting. So the old hen set on these eggs and finally when they all hatched, uh, that little eagle was an ugly duckling to that bunch of chickens. Uh, he's the funniest looking thing they ever seen. And that's about the way some of you did when you really hatched out. <laughs> Among a big bunch of farm and cold and so forth and a bunch of creeds, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hail Mary, blessed art thou, and all this other kind of a stuff. And we believe in and uh, all these other things, you know, about that. We believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the, all this Apostles' Creed. I wish somebody showed me Apostles' Creed in the Bible. Mm. That's no Apostles' Creed. If they had any creed, it was repent. That's why Peter told him on the day of Pentecost, said, Repent, every one of you! Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
Or the promises unto you and to your children to them as far as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's the Apostles' Creed. That's what it was. Not none of this. I believe in the Holy Roman Catholic Church. I believe in the communion of saints. Anybody who believes in the communion of saints is confessing that they're spiritualists. That's right. There's only one mediator between God and man. That's the man Christ Jesus. Yeah. I don't believe in no communion of saints. Saints are going on. Abraham said it. He was a, uh, Jesus said that he was in the bosoms of Abraham. And he said he could not come here or go there. These either way. So that settles it. It's a gulf betwixt which they cannot cross back and forth. And there's no communion of saints. That's right. The only communion we have is through Jesus Christ. That's our mediator. The Bible said there's no other mediator between God and man but the man Christ Jesus. That's exactly right. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other grounds of sinking sands. This little old eagle, the mother had to got him off the nest, you know, he kind of followed along behind. You remember how out of place you seen? <laughs> my, my. said, this don't seem right. Walk in that old dusty yard and, and where the cows is walking, the horses and that old dust flying up. Hmm, what a stink. said, this don't seem right. He looked up like that and said, say, what about up there? <laughs> And the old hen said, cluck, 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 cluck. Days of miracles has passed. No such thing as flying up in there. That's impossible. <laughs> it just didn't set right, you know. It just, it didn't suit his gastronomics. <laughs> you know, there's something better up there somewhere. So he kept walking with his head up. And she said, children, don't listen to him. He's one of them odd guys. <laughs> That's where an eagle is when he's kind of out of place amongst the chickens. See? So she goes over on the big old manure pond. She begins to scratch. She said, cluck, 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 cluck. We're going to have, a, we're, we're going to have an old supper over here tonight. We've got to pay the pastor. We've got to have some kind of a sale to pay the pastor. When it gets to a place like that, the church ought to close its doors. Pay your tithes and the pastor will be paid. We'll have a bunco game. We'll have all these other things here. That little eagle started. He said, I couldn't stand that. My, you kept looking up. Looking up. And after a while, the old mother was searching for him. Here she come. She swooped down. She seen him. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, my. She screamed, darling, you're not a chicken. You're a man. Oh, I remember when I first heard about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He screamed in my heart, it's for you. I called you. Oh, you're not a chicken, you're mine. Oh, and he heard that cry. What did she say when she came back across again? She said, not cluck, cluck, cluck. She said, glory, hallelujah, praise the Lord. That sounds good to him. Amen. That's, what he was, that's what he was born for. Yes. That's why his name was put on the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. My sheep know my voice. Yes. When they heard that, it's just like a honey on a rock for a bear. He'll lick it all night. See, coming. He knows that there's something. You're a mine, honey. You're not a chicken. You're an eagle. Oh, is that what it is, mama? Look at them big wings. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. I am that I am. Hey, man, that sounds good. Yes. What can I do, mama? Just jump as high as you can jump and start flopping. I'll get you. Hallelujah. He made a big jump into four or five flops and he hit right on top of a post, right in the middle of an organization. She come back across again. She said, honey, you've got to do better than that. I can't even pick you up. <laughs> what we need today is a nest stirring time. What we need today is the power of the Holy Ghost. What we need today is eagle food. Preaching that Jesus Christ still heals. He's the same the works that I do. Shall you do also? Aren't you glad to know tonight that Jehovah has his big wings across here, waving his spirit back and forth? The angel of the Lord had his picture taken. Same pillar of fire that was in the wilderness in the New Testament. Now in the last days, yesterday, today, and forever. People being healed, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with tongues, interpretations, power of God coming, the Lord drawing nigh, God getting His church together. Aren't you glad to be in such a thing as that? Happy. Amen. I don't know why I go much longer or not. This seems like I'm about to take off right now. This feels good to me to know that it's a truth. It's not a Santa Claus story. It's a truth of a living God. Do you believe in it? Yeah, with all your heart. Do you believe we need a nest during time? 
Do you need to need the Holy Ghost again? Do you believe we need a fresh pouring out of the Spirit? Do you believe the church needs a rebaptizing again? Do you believe with all your heart? Let's start something right now, will you? Are you ready to get under the wind? Are you ready to do it? Do you believe it? Let's stand on our feet. How many people here hasn't got the Holy Ghost? How many people hasn't got the Holy Ghost? Come here just a minute. Come down out of that balcony. This is nesting time. Let's get these old loose feathers out. We can't even have a real healing service till we get these feathers straight out. God will never take us up there and drop us till we get these feathers out of us. Come now. Everybody that wants to come under the power of the Spirit, come up here just a minute and stand around this altar. I believe God's going to pour out the Holy Ghost right here tonight and shake this thing and get all the feathers out of here and take his eagles on the wings like that and take us out there for a revival. I want to see a revival left here. I want to see every one of these churches on fire, the power of God falling. Need it. Come on down to the balcony, brother. Don't put it off any longer. This, if you're a sinner, come to. Come right on. You without the Holy Ghost, you without repentance, move right on up around the altar. Oh, it says so far down. If you fail to get it one day in hell, it would be too far to get back to repent again. It's a lot closer here than it would be out of hell. Come on, all without battle shirt, take the hell route. Come on, that's it. Come on, eagles. Have you heard him scream tonight? Have you felt his presence? Have you felt that wind saying, this is it? Yeah. It is. This is it. Praise God. This is the same that they had on the day of Pentecost. This is the real power of God. This is it. I'm waiting. They're coming from the balconies. Some of them coming down. There is a fountain filled with blood, if you will, brother, on the organ. Let's sing it now while we're waiting for all the eagles to gather around. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, this is that. If this isn't that, I'll just keep this to that come. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come. There is a fountain He'll give you a gift of prophecy. He'll do something for you. Won't you come? Get the loose feathers shook out now. Oh, there you Won't you come? Come from the balcony, sinner friend. Move on down. Come on. All you that just accepted Christ as personal Savior, yet not been filled with the Holy Ghost, won't you come up around the altar? God bless you, lady. Lose all their gifts. This is the only way for you to please God is to obey. They that come to God must believe. Now look, some of you Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, or some that has never received the Holy Ghost yet. How would God let me do these things that he does here at night? How would he send me out on a field seven times around the world? How would he do that and let millions of souls be won if I didn't have some conception of truth? How would he let me do these things, the signs that he said that would send in the last days? And we've never even seen him or read of him in history before since the days of our Lord. Why would he let me bring a message like this if I'm wrong? He will never bless a lie. But he lets me bring it because I preach this is the truth. This is the way. And listen, you Catholic friend. Did you know Virgin Mary had to go up and get the Holy Ghost and stagger like she was drunk before God ever led her in heaven? How are you going to get there anything less than that? Your church, your creed, whatever it is, if it's Pentecostal creed, if it's Baptist creed or Methodist creed, whatever it is, you'll never get in anything less than the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Exactly. So you said it seems so strange. Yes, sir. What makes these people act like that is because they're born from above. They're spirits of another kingdom. 
their kingdom is above. Jesus said, if this world was my kingdom, my people would fight for it. But my kingdom is above hell. Amen. That's right. Won't you come? Let's sing once more so I'll be sure. I've just prayed all day that God would fill this place and shake it like never before. Amen. Hallelujah. Persuasion in Christ. If you regard me as his servant, if you do, I appreciate it. I can help you. Now, all of you here seeking God's Holy Spirit, raise up your hands. You're hungry. Jesus said, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. Now, there's a bunch of people out in here I want to deal with before I, we go to the room there. But I want you people here that's seeking the Holy Ghost to follow one of these ministers. Which one? This brother right here. Take the lead. Go into the room here just a minute. Here, go in like this. Lord, if you don't give me the Holy Ghost, when you come back to earth, I'll be laying right here. Okay? Yes, don't, don't play with it. If you do, you'll never get nowhere. You've got to mean business. You've got to come to God believing that you're going to get what He. Why, why did He say that? I said a while ago, them people couldn't cast out that evil spirit. They said, why couldn't we do it? He said, because of your unbelief. Amen. Not if they didn't have power to do it, but they didn't have faith to do it. Now, you've got the power to receive the Holy Ghost. You've got the Holy Ghost on you because you're hungering and thirsting. And Jesus said, you're blessed because you even hunger and thirst. Now, hear me and believe. Go right in there now while I deal with another group here. Be in there just in a minute. All right. Now, as you take your place right here, go right this way to the room so we won't bother the rest of them. Sometimes people seeking the Holy Ghost, they think somebody's back there. I brought Mr. Jones and he's sitting back there. But to get you to yourself where everybody's dying with you, something's going to happen. That's right. Let's move right into the room. Let's all just got the Holy Ghost say, praise God. Look at this great power. Look at this great power. Now, all you personal workers, move right in with them now. All the personal workers, some of you ministering, brethren, if you will, to go in there to see that everything's carried on just exactly right. We want them to receive the real baptism of the Holy Spirit. Go right in the room so he meets you right in here just in a moment. There is a fountain
Now, if there's any in here that feel as with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, that you're not a Christian. You're not a Christian. You say, I should have went in there. But I want to raise up my hands to God and say, God, give me courage. Don't let me die in this condition. Friends, we're not playing church. It may seem odd to what you've been taught in your different creeds and churches, but this is the Bible. This is the way it was at the beginning, and God is infinite. It cannot change. This is the same. The prescription reads, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if you don't know him as your Savior, would you just, just be gentleman or lady enough to raise up your hand and say, pray for me, Brother Branham. I'm not a Christian. God bless you, young lady. In the balcony to the left, to the main floor, is there one here who would say, I, I'm not a Christian, Brother Branham. I, God bless you, lady. I, I have courage for a person that's it's honest. You'll never get no word with God until you're honest. Over here, God bless you, lady. God bless you, son. Up in the balcony to my right, raise your hand and say, I'm not a Christian. God bless you, lady. God bless you. Yeah, I'm not a Christian, but I really want to be, Brother Brandon. Pray that God will give me courage to come yet. Or if you don't, don't let me die this way. Sure, you don't want to die that way, children. Well, you, what made you raise your hand? Because the very thing in you, you're born to be an eagle. That's what made you raise your hand. Now, don't, don't, don't just let the little old pin feathers and things hold you from the heavenly flight. Why not do it tonight? Our Heavenly Father, there are those seven or eight people. Many of those, most of them are young people in the adolescent age. Just the crossroads. I noticed those beautiful, lovely looking young women, young men raising their hands. They're, they're hungering, Lord. Rock and roll and the things of the world can never satisfy that spot in a human heart till God comes in there. If there's any place there for him. If when he made that person, he made a place for himself to dwell in, nothing will never take its place. Father, let them know that the greatest thing that ever happened to them is when conviction come on their soul that they, would, they wanted to serve him. I pray for them, Father, even now, while we have our heads bowed, that those people that raise their hands will make their way right in that room. Those young children, Lord, just nothing but, but teenage children. I pray, Father, that all that raise their hands will have the courage. And may my prayer go before you to knock at the door one more time, Father. Granted, maybe they'll go in the greatest thing they ever done. I can remember back in the early days of my boyhood... How that night I was hungering and I felt you knock at my door, Lord. I, I'm so glad I let you in. Now I'm a middle-aged man. I just love you more than I ever loved you in my life. Oh, God, never let nothing happen. If I can't serve you, take me now. Let me go now. What a joy it is, the privilege to serve God. Give it to these young people, Lord. They've got an awful battle. Look at them. Look at what they got. Look at their television, rotten and polluted. Look at the nation they're coming up in here. Politics, rotten to the core. The Antichrist are rising in seat and power. The world American people don't know what a struggle is. They don't know how to do without. They never had to miss a meal. Oh, God, just look. Glamour and Hollywood and... It's even got into assembly line religion in the churches and streamlined Hollywood. No more old-fashioned all-night prayer meetings and agonizing and praying and having fellowship around the things of God. No more praying through. God, these children need that. I pray that they'll receive it tonight. I'm keeping my eyes closed, Lord. I'm going to believe that you're going to send every one of them straight to that room. Grant it, Father. Let it be done, Lord. Please do. I can shake their hand on that day and say, yes. A little old chopped up message one night as the eagle stirs its nest. You stirred the nest of the world that they lived in. They're getting tired of it, Lord. They're raising up their hands. They're looking up. How great thou art. How great thou art. May they flee, Lord, into the heavenly blues. For they can fellowship up there with fellow kinsmen of the same gospel. Eagle's food. May they eat. Grant it, Lord. Not be an earthbound chicken at wolves and them young ladies, that old wolf stuff they have today, the 
boogie woogie and rock and roll and let them know, Lord, it's just a thing to tear their precious souls out of them and send them to a devil's hell. Callous their hearts, pull it through these old movie stories and true stories when it's all lies and fiction and makeup. Let them look at these big wings of God, the New and Old Testament. Say, there I'll take my stand, right there upon that rock. Grant it, Lord. I'm trusting that each one of them is in that room now. Grant it, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let's just stand still a minute. Scripture, that's the voice of God speaking back in confirmation. Be reverence with that. What did he say? Don't rebel. Go into the room. Every sinner without the blood of Christ, make your way to the room, friend. If the Bible, don't forgive me for saying if, we know the Bible is right. That's not my voice, that's God's voice speaking. And to you people that's sick, you hear what he said? That's a message to the church. See, that's the Holy Spirit. Now, as saying at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, let every sinner move back in here. Will you please move back here? If, if at the cross, at the cross, where I first, that's right, move right back, it's fine. And the burden of my heart broke. Rest of you may be seated if you wish to. It was a personal workers, hurry to the room right quick. Now, I, everybody that wants to be a volunteer for a personal worker, move their needing in the room there where the people's receiving the Holy Ghost. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw light and the burden of my heart. All the way, all the way, it was that I made, I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Let's just hum it and hold our hands to God. Mm. Oh. Mm. oh, God, we love you, Lord. We love you. Sweetly and in the tune that you're singing, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw light. At the nest, you see, and now my heart rolled away. I seen her two big wings. It was there. By I climbed up on them. I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just can't let that go. Is it sweet? Don't you feel it in your heart? And the